Okay, welcome everybody, if anybody shows up. Another attempt at a boring stream that's non-gaming. And for some reason I lost my mic settings on this setup here, so I had to redo those earlier today. I did that while I did my um, fairly short Linux stream that I was testing out. Just uh, something I wanted to see if I could do. I could do it, but um, yeah, it's just the computer's not made for it. It's pretty old. And I'll, probably, I'll be probably taking that VOD down. And it's just a test. But what I have lined up for today is... Um, I was inspired by something a little bit earlier, uh, Thursday evening. And, I, uh, for privacy reasons, I won't really go into that. But what I'm going to be doing is working in GIMP. And then some data studio work. What I'll be doing in GIMP. Switch over to that quick here. So I was going to work on this texture here. And I already worked out before the stream uh, what I was going to do. Otherwise, I'd be streaming an hour of trying to go through different layers and merchant resources and stuff like that just to kind of get a feel for what I want to reach. But now that I want to know what I do, and it is, in fact, showing up still here in Daz Studio. But I'll go through a basic workflow of what I do here in the GIMP. And how you can do this without having something like ZBrush or even Blacksmith 3D. Something which I've been looking into. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, it'll it'll make things a lot easier, but... Really, how many textures do I make, say, in a month? So, right now, free is working out. It's just a couple of uh, additional steps involved. But I already have what I want to start with uh, as a base here. So, what I just loaded here is a merchant resource. And the first thing we're going to do is trim so that I just have one side. So and by the way I'm I'm not gonna bother playing uh, with music. One of my goals is to monetize these videos on YouTube and you know even even if the music is cleared I would either have to prove it or sometimes uh, like I did a stream a few days ago and I played Monster Cat in the background and Monster Cat monetized my video. So I cannot do anything with that video uh, as far as monetization. I'm allowed to keep it up and, you know, play the music in there, but uh, Monster Cat is making money off of that. Not that I'm having a lot of viewers, you know, but... But anyway, I'm just going to go over a little, just uh, kind of a workflow type of thing here. So, every texture is going to be a little bit different, and every morph is going to be different. So, the way Brandy's eyes are shaped here... Um, is different from say another character I might load up so a lot of times when I'm doing this sort of thing I have a specific character in mind so see what's underneath here all that's going to be covered up anyway uh, based on what I want to do here so but I, I still want to get the 
the same general line going. So if I remember correctly, I don't think I rotated this at all. I just kind of sized it. So the first thing we're going to check is the alignment. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to figure out a different naming convention. See, what Daz Studio does is when you load in a new texture, it copies it to a folder and it optimizes that image. So let's say you load uh, a TIFF image as a texture and it's several megabytes. It will convert that into its own proprietary file format and optimize it. Otherwise, you have a lot of heavy textures in a scene. It starts to weigh that scene down. So I understand where they're going with it. Uh, but as a general rule, when I work with textures and I load them into Dash Studio, I just go by JPEG as default anyway. You really normally don't notice a big change. So now I'm just saving that as a JPEG and I call it test001. As you can see here, it's just kind of showing a blank test uh, placeholder. But this is this is how it's going to look on the character. So I have to shape a little bit more. Just move that over there like that. Stretch it out. Oh, oh, two. I just do uh, an incremental naming convention till I, you know, I'll arrive at something that I kind of like. And then I'll just kind of go from there. Now I remember what I did here last time was you can see the cursor over here. I kind of brushed in this area a little bit more with uh, an airbrush. And I was having a lot of trouble with the corner here. So I think I'm probably just going to leave that alone. Maybe move this over to the right and move it up a little more and then do a little erasing around where the eyebrow is. So, it's over. Up to about here. Oh, this keeps, what do you think keeps moving? Click on it. And I'm using my tablet. It is a Wacom Bamboo Touch. It's several years old. Uh, it's not made anymore. But it's a really nice unit. It doesn't have a very large surface area to draw on, but it has four buttons on it. And the stylus is okay. It's not the best one in the world. But it has interchangeable nubs. And it also acts as a touchpad. So there are a lot of, uh, why am I doing that? There, is a, there are a lot of features involved. It's a very nice um, starter, beginner to intermediate um, tablet. Eventually, I'm going to upgrade to an Intuos. I just, uh, I don't really see a need for it right now. Yeah. But eventually, eventually that's what I'll go with. 
I can grab one for somewhere around a hundred, hundred fifty dollars. Just kind of do a little. I'm going to actually. I may rotate this just a little. I'm going to erase this area here. Let's see, let's go with no. I hate that you have to triple click it in order to select the whole thing. It's kind of annoying. That's the brush I want. Let's turn this down a little bit. Just want to get the eyebrow and I want a nice smooth transition here. Okay, let's see what we have. Not bad. It's not bad. I might add a little bit here. Again, with the way the way her eyes are shaped, it's this one's a little tough. It's always tough to make, um, do custom textures with her because of her eye shape. It ends up being somewhere in here. Okay. Brush and so. So just a gradual step-by-step -step kind of thing. With ZBrush or Blacksmith 3D, you can paint the textures right on the figure. You can't do it in Dash Studio. Um, you can do it in Blender too, uh, to a certain point. But uh, Blacksmith 3D is made for um, artists who work in Poser and Dash Studio. So that's really where the market is. And obviously, you know, the Blacksmith 3D is only about $100, $150. ZBrush is like, I think it's actually running about 800 now. So... I just lost my train of thought there. I was about to export it again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a little bit better. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... It's actually working out a lot faster than I did it the first time. Just going to colorize this. Kick the saturation way up and just a little bit brighter, maybe. I didn't do a brightness before. I can always test it and find out. And if I don't like it, I'll just hit Control Z. Browse. You know what? That's actually kind of cool. I kind of like that. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Is anybody here? It's muted. It's muted. Beautiful. 
No watchers yet. That's fine. Maybe people on YouTube can give me input. Actually get views on YouTube. I actually have 125 subscribers there. Despite not really making any content since 2012, 2013. But, you know, really, the the point of doing this is to really just kind of show people what I go through, I guess. Now that looks a little blatant there. I wonder what's going to happen if I merge lights. It's probably not going to show up because it's right, right here by the eye line. So I probably don't have to worry about that. Soft shadows, 0.25. I probably should have changed that before I saved it as a default. Let's do a spot render here. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to lighten it. I'm just going to leave it so that it kind of looks black. Back to colorize. What I'm doing here is you have presets, so you can save a preset, but it also records uh, previous times that you've messed with these um, different plugins. So you can pull that up. And if you just need to make a little adjustment to it, like I'm just going to go with zero. Now that's more, more black. More black. None more black. None black. So now we pull up test seven. Still a sheen there. I think that's what I'm running into is the sheen. This is a an issue that you could sometimes run into when you're doing custom shaders, add ambient color, because um, using an ambient color other than black, you're really kind of cheating because your ambient channel is actually, uh, it sort of works like a light emitter. It doesn't actually emit light, but the surface acts like it is emitting light. <laughs> it's hard to explain. It's like having a lamp that's on, but it's not actually throwing light out. So if you could picture a bulb that's like white, but it's not luminous and say in a 3d program say that ambient channel is at zero or uh, black and as you start to add white to it it makes it look like it's glowing it's not throwing light but the the surface itself has the appearance that it is throwing light if that makes any sense so, yeah, I think we'll we'll probably go with that. So, the next thing we have to do is we have to duplicate this. And this is an interesting thing here, too, because sometimes if you want to beef it up, you, all you have to do is duplicate it, and then you can mess around with the opacities over here on the right. So, not that I'm going to stick with this, but... Give it a try because why not? Probably not going to stick with it, but all right. I mean, it's fine, but uh... so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip this horizontally so it's like that, and this is probably a good time to bring up a uh, grid view. 
So I'm just going to show a grid. So here's my copy. This is just going to help me line things up. It's not easy on the eyes, but kind of gives me a general position here. Let's back out a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at this line here. Going to line it up with uh, it appears to be this one. And it's not going to be perfect because I don't think this base texture is symmetrical uh, 100%. And as you can see here, I could probably, I'll leave it. Actually, I'll leave that. If it needs some fine adjustment, I can tell by throwing the texture on the figure. So turn off the grid. Test 09. There, there are additional steps to this, but uh, I, I'm used to it. It's, it's a decent workflow. So yeah, this needs to this needs to move over a little bit more. So I can do my fine adjusting adjusting now. Somewhere in there. Go. Still needs to move over a little bit. Probably up just a touch. Just using my tablet to make fine movements. Test it again. This workflow goes all the way back to when I was doing mods for The Sims, like back in like 2002, 2003. <laughs> so. And I still think it needs to move over just a little bit. On the sides, it doesn't appear to be that way. And it's not bad. I still feel like it needs to move just a tiny bit more. It looks fine here, but and I don't want to go George Lucas on it either, so This is probably where I'm going to leave it. Otherwise, I just obsess over it for a day. Sometimes have a little touch of that OCD. See, part of me still wants to move it to the right a little bit, but I'm going to leave it. So, you know, when you think about it, um, say with real makeup work it's not going to be 100 percent symmetrical so people are not going to notice it being this you know this far off which really is not that far off at all um so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to merge where is she
Okay, it's punk off. All right. What I'm going to do is save a shader setting. Eating asset. Going to transfer a shader setting over. So I'm going to save one. And then I'm going to merge that onto this character. So I ha what I have to do is I have to load another scene. So it may get a little confusing here for a bit. Just gonna kill all these lights here. All I want is the figure. how confusing that is <laughs> but um and she is looking at a different camera so watch okay <laughs> this lip texture i am going to copy so on, you can do it. So this surface here. Surface, I thought I used over surface. I did use human surface, that's good. So this shader set is, it's going to generate a preset that contains surface property information for one surface of an object. You can apply this to anything you want, but it's going to save parameters from one single surface. These things are broken up into many different uh, surfaces or nodes. I'm just gonna call it Jemmy Lips. And uh, now I can delete her. Been deleted, Jemmy. Sorry. Longer needed. Sorry. I'll come back anytime. So I'm going to ju just to just to make it a little. Well, actually, I could do that too. I could show you that. Do, 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 do. So shader presets, Omni, human surface. If I go, just apply this. Ah, will it save it? I'll do, I'll do ignore textures. So now just the surface is applied. What I can do now Just check this uh, bump real fast here. It's still Remy. Okay. I could probably just, I could have probably just um, tip back over. See what happens. Yeah, that's fine. I, sh I, I could have just applied the base, not worried about textures, and then done this. So, as you can see, it matches up really well already. Just maybe give this a little bit more blue. This ambient color is going to shift this way. And I'll probably turn it up to 25. So something like that. Specular one, specular two. So that was really simple, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name. Uh, it's a Remy base, so. Let's 
go blue one. See all these test files now, I don't need them anymore. Don't need that placeholder. Actually, don't need this texture either. So I have my preset saved and I have this. Texture already saved. 